we must understand the politics of our community and we must know what politics is supposed to produce produce this election year KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics. And we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh- this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. of the Friday edition. It's the Friday group chat. Dr. Sean Fletcher, Danny Griffin joining me. As soon as we get out of the, get out of the way, uh, get this news out of the way rather, let's get you caught up. The House voted today to pass a sweeping $1.2 trillion government funding bill, sending it to the Senate just hours before the deadline to prevent a shutdown. Shortly thereafter, the Senate voted 78 to 18 to advance the bill procedurally, but all 100 senators will need to green light a final vote to skip their, uh, to skip other hurdles and pass the bill before the midnight deadline. If that doesn't happen, then the government would be forced into a partial shutdown on Saturday morning. Joe Biden has said he will sign the bill. Rep. Marjorie Taylor Greene has filed a motion to remove Speaker Mike Johnson, doing so just as the House voted to avoid said shutdown. Johnson, who's a Republican from Louisiana, has served for Speaker as about f- for about five months, having taken over for Kevin McCarthy, who was ousted from the job under a similar process. Green stopped short of forcing a vote to remove him, calling her motion a warning. House Democrats say Mike Johnson does have an option to control his future over a motion to vacate from Marjorie Taylor Greene, and that option is putting a Ukraine aid package on the floor. Several Democrats from across the ideological spectrum said in interviews that they would motion to table Green's resolution if it comes to a vote. If Johnson puts a Ukraine aid package on the House floor for a vote. And in recent days, Johnson has indicated privately to some Democrats that he would put Ukraine aid bill up for a vote on the floor after lawmakers come back from their Easter recess. Men in camouflage broke into a Moscow concert hall and opened fire, shooting an unknown number of people, according to Russia's prosecutor general. Russia's state-owned news agency, TASS, is reporting that Russia's FSB security agency, has put the preliminary casualty count at 40 dead and more than 100 injured. In a separate event, a fire started inside Crocus City Hall, a large concert venue northwest of central Moscow. Firefighters have evacuated about 100 people from the basement of the building, and efforts are underway to rescue people from the roof. According to Russian emergency officials, and last I heard, that roof was actually collapsing, and it was unknown if people were still there uh, on that roof. Sentencing has concluded for the six white former officers in Mississippi who pleaded guilty to breaking into a home without a warrant and torturing two black men. High-ranking former Deputy Brett McAlpin received a sentence of about 27 years and was the fifth former law enforcement officer sentenced this week after pleading guilty to the attack. The assault involved beatings, the repeated use of stun guns, and assaults with a sex toy before one of the victims was shot in the mouth in a mock execution. The final member of the group was given a sentence of about 10 years yesterday. All right, let's get to the discussion, fellas. When we come forward, I'm going to talk about this March Madness. A major upset happened today that I'm really not happy about. We're going to talk about that and uh, a lot of other stuff as well that's happening in in, in the culture. And maybe we'll get to to Shohei Otani's situation with his interpreter and uh, what could happen with that. So uh, all that's coming up when we come forward right here on KBLA Talk 1580. She's the real deal. In real time. You're listening to Ariva Martin in real time on KBLA Talk 1580. Climbing is king. 
At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that caring for the community means caring about the climate. You might have heard that we announced a pretty bold 12-month, $2 million campaign to do four things. Increase climate literacy, turn up the volume on communities of color in the climate conversation, connect everyday people with the resources they need to survive and thrive, and highlight frontline climate justice crusaders of color throughout this year. KBLA Talk 1580 will be bringing you insightful interviews on all of our shows to help raise your climate IQ. Each quarter this year, we will also be hosting free climate events in various communities throughout the city with food, fun, and forward-thinking conversations. Thanks to partners like LADWP, Metro, Caltrans, the Sierra Club, the California Community Foundation, the California Endowment, AQMD, MWD, and more. You'll also be hearing more about a couple of national town halls broadcasting live from Los Angeles, to which you will be invited. And we'll be rolling out a robust social media campaign on all our platforms, as well as an outdoor media campaign, all designed to educate, enlighten, and empower you in our fight for climate justice. We want cleaner air. Caring about the community means caring about the climate. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that we really can change the world. If we care enough, we care enough, we care enough, we care enough, we care enough. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a Samsung Galaxy A14 included when you buy an extended silver unlimited plan. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Switch to Straight Talk. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. Taxes and fees apply. Did you know one of the best investments you can make? It's in yourself. At My Computer Career, in just a few months, you can start your new career in the high demand, recession resistant field of information technology. Isn't it time you invest in you and start a career in networking, cybersecurity, AI, or upskill to boost your current IT career? So get the ROI you deserve at My Computer Career, no experience necessary. Start now at mycomputercareer.edu. Financial aid is available for qualified students, including the GI Bill. Hey, I have a secret. Uh-huh. I use Secret Whole Body Deodorant because more than just my armpits stink. Uh-huh. Can I use it where my bra rubs under my... Oh, <laughs> yeah. And what about down there? You know, my... Totally. Four out of five gynecologists would recommend it. So I tried it, and now I get 72 hours of freshness, freshness. from my pits to my... Ooh, I love that it's a spray. Me too. And it comes in sticks and creams, too. Go get your secret whole body deodorant. There's no time like the present. Let's get back to more of Aretha Martin in real time on KBLA Talk 1580. Back on the Friday edition, back on the Friday group chat with Danny Griffin and Dr. Sean Fletcher. And I appreciate you joining us as well, uh, whether you're listening on 1580 AM here in Los Angeles or the free KBLA app, or you're listening to and watching us on YouTube Yes, you can watch us on YouTube, and if you have anything to say during this next hour, you can give us a call at 800-920-1580, 800-920-1580. How's your bracket looking? Because mine's not looking too good. Uh, let's, uh, let's get into this March Madness talk. Uh, the ladies started playing as well now, but um, I'm, I'm mostly talking about my, my men's bracket at this point just because, oof, that... Auburn lost today. Auburn lost to Yale today. I had Auburn going to the Final Four. Now, I didn't have them Ooh. winning it, but I had them going to the Final Four because I, I had them upsetting UConn. Auburn looked really good down the stretch. That's their roster construction. They were up in this game by seven at halftime. They were up seven with, I think, I don't know, five or six minutes left. They were in control the whole game, and then Yale kept coming back. And then I didn't even know until Danny walked in and said, oh, that Auburn loss. I said, wait, what? Because I was, you know, I was getting ready for the show and, and, and stuff. So Auburn lost today. I don't like it. But any, uh, any, anything, uh, any in particular game throwing your bracket into disarray there, Danny? Oh, man, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> man, we want to start. You want to start in Oakland? <laughs> we want to start, man. Well, we'll see about how far did you have, because uh, you talked about Oakland beating Kentucky yesterday. How far did you have Kentucky going? That's that's the major measure of a bracket buster right there. No, uh, mm-hmm. that that's it. But to me, if your bracket is busted, it's busted. No, because if you only had Kentucky going to the round of thirty-two or even the Sweet Sixteen, that's not yeah. that, that's not that big of a of an upset. No, it's not. Um, so, ah, oh, man, 
I got UConn going to the championship in one of them. But we know it, we know you got UConn going yeah, to the championship. Yeah. Man. We know you you used to coach at UConn and you don't <laughs> pick UConn. I'm asking if any if you had any bracket busters. All right, so so right now right now I, I'm I'm looking okay in one of my in, in one of my brackets. How many brackets man. you got? How many brackets? I got two. Okay, I made two. Also. I got two. I had Auburn so, going deep in both yeah. of them. All right, so um, one of them I'm looking decent. Right, okay. I'm looking. I, I'll take it. I'll All right, take it. Sean. What about you? Any uh, any major any major bracket uh, disruptions for you so far? Well, after today, I may choose to exclusively focus on my women's <laughs> bracket. Uh, where 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 most of the way through day one, I'm at ninety eight percent minus man. Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State threw me off. I I I did not have them beating North Carolina, or actually. Like Actually, yeah, I did not call that game. That's the only game I, I missed out. That's crazy. Oh, the men's the men's bracket, um my bracket is not busted. I, I have my down to the Elite Eight. I'm looking at it now as we're talking. I my Elite Eight is intact right now. My sweet sixteen, uh Auburn, come on, who who picked that? Uh I didn't have that <laughs> uh on my bingo card, of course. I had I had Kentucky losing in the Sweet 16, so I feel good about that. Mm-hmm. And that, for the most part, is is about it. So my men's bracket, uh, I did an ESPN bracket, it is 83% intact. So I'm I'm okay. okay. I'm not. I don't think I'm as bad as as you two, good brother. Okay, well, apparently it's just me because Danny seems like he's doing just fine. But yeah, I'm doing uh, good. Only Auburn. I only pick <laughs> Auburn and Kentucky. I got Auburn and Kentucky. Uh, you know how how did you have Auburn going? So um, to to play UConn. Okay, so but that, I had that, UConn that was, advancing. That, that was advancing. Sweet Sixteen, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Danny, we know you got UConn advancing, but you ain't got to yeah, say we that. Know. We know. I had know. to throw that in there. We already know if if UNLV was in the tournament. You would have them upsetting anybody. You'd have them going to the to the, to the finals too. Um, but uh, anything else uh, stand out to you uh, about um, the the first day and a half so far? I know that uh, Charleston is playing Alabama right now. I I don't know if I picked in my bracket uh, for Charleston to get that upset, but I did I did bet on it just because um, I uh, I feel like they have a good shot to win that game. But um, any any games standing out to you, Danny? Uh, that going forward, other than UConn. I'm I'm curious to see what Oakland does against NC State. So NC State is 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 that team that everybody's looking at like last year's FAU. I mean these guys won five games in five days, um, kind of you know similar to what Kimber Walker did in 2011 with UConn, and uh, you know they got the big fella down low, the big lefty Zach Randolphish down low, and mm-hmm. uh, you know they look really really good. But how long can they keep this up? Right now they play Oakland, right? Who upset? Kentucky, with a 24-year-old guy that was driving Uber a couple of years ago. He had 30 points. And uh, that's very interesting, right? Just the storylines. You got the guy that drove Uber, 30 points. And then and then you got the point guard from Washington State, uh, uh, you know, who's looking really well, uh, you know, cancer survivor right now. Um, so you got a lot of – it's a lot of storylines, right? You had Long Beach State coach, of course, that was fired. And um, – you know, before this tournament started and rallied his team to win the conference tournament and lost ultimately to Arizona. Mm-hmm. So you got a lot of storylines that, you know, which is the big thing of March Madness too, right? The right. storylines that right. a lot of people uh, love listening to. And they're still developing, by the way. Oh, I do have Charleston in my bracket uh, winning, but they're they're down by six right now. Not like, oh, no, they're up by six. Charleston's up 19-13 out of them. I do have Charleston advancing in my bracket. All right, so, Sean, any uh, – Dr. Fletcher, any – any uh, games stand out to you or anything you're looking for as we go forward? Yeah, similarly, um, NC State, there, and you know, whether it be NBA or, or uh, college basketball, college basketball is, is different because you don't have a series to try to, right. to make a comeback. It's one and done. But it's about who's playing best right now. It's not about what you did early on in the season as we're starting to see. And NC State is, is hitting their stride, like Danny said. I mean, they are a legitimate contender moving forward. Oh, really? So I'm curious to see what what I, I'm cu- I'm curious to see what noise they'll make. I, I think Oakland they're going to turn into a pumpkin tomorrow. 
I, I don't I don't foresee that going any any further. The the young man, I applaud. It's a fantastic story. He caught fire, and uh, uh, Kentucky had no answers Jack Colkey, for him. Yeah. Yes, Jack Colkey. I don't. I don't believe that they they have the firepower in order to actually make some serious noise, like I thought Sanford was going to do. But we're not going to get into how they got robbed, how they got totally robbed at that end of that game with that that uh, erroneous foul call and that chase down block. But I'm curious to see how how they do things. But like I said, I'm I'm hoping that I just keep my bracket remotely intact so i could have an interesting uh weekend number two i'll say yeah yeah nc state definitely got lucky that oakland upset uk because that's i'm sure that's the matchup that they'd rather have and oakland you could also Mm -hmm. say that that oakland got lucky that uh that nc state is there too but um so yeah uh looking forward to the rest of today and this weekend but uh let's talk about this uh this hatred that beyonce is getting because she is um She's receiving some some hate from some fellow black female artists, uh, and, and you know Azalea Banks is dissing her. Okay, who is Azalea Banks? She she's always in a beef with somebody. Um, but let's and also the the Erica Badu criticism is what the one I take more seriously. But um, I'm 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 kind of taken aback that these that these women are dissing Beyonce just because of her her album cover. Azalea Banks um, is saying that by ha- by uh, having her uh cowboy carter um album you know be talk be focusing on country music it's it's white woman cosplay and so i'm like beyonce she she made basically an afro beats album uh with uh and, and for the lion king soundtrack um talking about you know how beautiful brown skinned women are and and beyonce is has has been unapologetically black for her whole career so because she has a country album, you're going to say she's engaging in white woman cosplay. I, I, I'm. This is just to me, Azalea Banks, wanting some attention, and trying to siphon some of the attention that Beyonce is rightfully getting, for her absolute brilliance throughout her entire career. And I, I just, I don't know what else. To, to think about it because why why else would you do that and we'll get into the erica badu comments too but as far as azalea banks is concerned i i i think she should just stop hating but am i am i tripping dr fletcher no i think you're spot on and, and azalea banks she this isn't her first time hating uh, I, I think i think it's easy to throw rocks at the queen <laughs> when you kind of want a little bit of that shine if you if you could if that opportunity came to her and she had the cachet, she would do it as well. And then she's trying to, to pull really some offbeat criticism of Beyonce platform to share the spotlight with white women. Come on. Like you, you could do better than that. That's a weak argument. Go back, do your research. If you're if you're the, the artist deep in the game like you claim to be, do your research on who Beyonce has put on how she celebrated black music, how even this country music venture mm-hmm. is a, a, a ode to our history and lineage in country music that has been co-opted and, and taken from us as though somehow we're invading a place that right. we largely created. Right. So no, she, she's Hayden. And I view her criticism and Erica Badu's slight shade as vastly different. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's why I want to kind of separate them and just get Azalea Banks is out of the way. And as if as if Beyonce had to try to and I think she even said she was pandering to white people like Beyonce ain't got to pander to nobody. Yeah. Beyonce ain't got to pander to nobody. People love Beyonce. Yeah. Everybody loves Beyonce. Women of every ethnic background love Beyonce. She ain't got to pander to nobody. And she knows that she, she creates what comes from her spirit. Like what she feels like she wants to create, she creates it and she does it well, whatever, whatever she tries to make, it turns out really well. And it's well received because she is a, a transformative, like generational artist. And she makes quality music, whatever genre she ventures into. But Danny, uh, let's, let's get you in here. What do you think about Azalea Banks comments? Yes. Yeah. 
Trash, man. Trash. <laughs> I've been waiting to say that. <laughs> My Bub Dub voice. I got I'ma give him the credit. I'm gonna give Bub Dub the credit. We gotta get it in every episode of the credit. Again. So you gotta, you gotta give everybody credit now before they come for you. Um, you know, I mean, too much is given, much required, man. If you're successful in any in any form in life, you gotta expect uh rhetoric or some some form of dislike from someone. Um someone's out there uh trying to be you. Um, no matter who you are, um, you know, and that's just how it goes. Um, and, and, and I see, you know, it's just a level of maturity, right? Because everybody gets something from somebody, right? James Brown, Jackie Wilson, you know, Prince, Michael Jackson, all these guys are, you know, similar. These guys got, they all acknowledge each other. But I think in this climate of what's going on, you know, starting with the comedians, the Cat Williams, the Monique stuff, I think that's, it's trending. When chaos is trending and, you know, and negativity is trending and talking about people is trending and, you know, putting other people who are successful into your rhetoric, uh, whether it be negative or positive, is trending because, mm -hmm. you know, nobody wants to hear about somebody. Nobody doesn't know unless they have a great story and great stories are sitting on shelves waiting to be used, uh, cherry picked. But see, it, it, you know, and. And now you bring up Badu in there and other people, and now you're going to create a riff. And now you're going to see, I hope we don't see a lot of African-American female artists in various genres starting to attack each other. That's what we don't need, right? And I hope this is not the domino effect for that, but it looks like it is. And so let's, uh, let's get into these Erica Badu comments. Now, Erica Badu is saying that Beyonce stole the braided look from her. Uh, she uh, in the, in the I believe it's the album cover. Uh, Beyonce has braids, and Erica Badu says that she stole her look. Um, what do we think about that, Doctor Fletcher? Like I said, I think uh, Azalea Banks and Erica Badu are vastly different in their criticism. First, I think I think Erica Badu is somewhat tongue in cheek. She she even went and added Jay Z on Twitter slash X mm -hmm. in sort of a joking way. She even put a, a, jo a laughing emoji on there to say, how y'all going to let uh, them do that to me? I, I don't view it the same way. I don't think Erica Badu is hating. I think some of it is kind of like, hey, listen, I kind of made the, the braided bangs thing popular, especially in this area of it. You know, somebody, look at me. I, that's what it felt like. It felt like it was a wave in my hand in the corner. It's like, somebody look at me. Beyonce is, is making something that I did even more famous than what I was able to do. I, I didn't, unless I missed some further comments, which I don't believe she put out there, I don't, I don't view Erica Badu's comments as hating or anything like that. I think it was more so of a, hey, she's doing something that I did before her. Hey, everybody look at me and acknowledge I did it before her, and then you can go celebrate her. He wasn't taken from her shine like like Azalea seemed to be trying to do. Danny, you agree? Uh, it might be a little bit. Oh, man, it's tough because Badu is so established, so you just hate to see this, right? Um, but obviously Badu was doing this. She was rocking this a long time ago. We all know that. We could see it. You got receipts. But we're talking about something that African-American women been doing for decades, not just in, you know, popular music culture you walk down the street and see that you know so i'm kind of i'm kind of confused a little bit uh, because you know you see that all the time especially if you go to rotary events or if you're in that part of the country in the south right you're gonna see that com it's commonplace if you're in texas and see african-american women were braids and, and cowboy has it's just the fact that you're not a mega superstar so badu is like hey what's going on but at the same time everybody gets something from somebody right so you sample music, you sample looks and everything. But who owns the look to that? Does does Badu need to go get a licensing agreement or something? Because last time I checked, nobody owns a, a you know any type of look or fashion or fashionista appearance uh, when somebody else can't do it. So that's all just watered under the bridge, and it's just just to be relevant and have something to talk about until they get to the next subject. Yeah, and she uh she posted a photo of Beyonce wearing the sachet. I think this was a different post. Um, and she just had the caption, "Hmm," 
Uh, and so, <laughs> mm-hmm. I, so I don't know if, if Erica Badu has a problem with Beyonce. I, I hope not. I hope it was, as you said, Dr. Fletcher gets kind of tongue in cheek and uh, just kind of saying, hey, yo, I did this too. You know, uh, yeah. it, it still does feel like, like an attempt to get some attention. It does feel like, yeah. You know, some some an attempt to 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 kind of uh like I guess uh what, what what's the, the it's, it's uh you put the 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 siphon on the gas uh tank and try to get some of the, someone else's gas. That's what she's trying to do because mm-hmm. she she wants some of it. And so and, and Beyoncé is so hot right now, but she's always been so hot. And, and and she's she's always been so popular and I just feel like sometimes people people haven't had that longevity. I mean, I love a lot of Erica Badu's music. Um, I don't love everything she's ever had to say about everything, but, uh, I love her, a lot of her music and, uh, I, but, but she hasn't had the longevity that Beyonce's had and, and cause almost nobody has. And so, um, I think that's just an attempt to get some attention. But when we come forward though, fellas, uh, let's, uh, let's see, what should we talk about? Should we, I think we should talk about Shohei Otani because that's, um, uh, that's a that's a situation that we're really a lot of information is still coming out about. But as someone who does gamble on sports, I um, I'm really interested to see how this turns out because what, what we it, it, the story has been changing. At first, it was uh, Shohei Otani's interpreter saying that, uh, oh yeah, he loaned me the money to uh, to pay off these debts, and then Shohei Otani's camp saying, uh, no, we didn't, uh, and it, and it's really difficult since. Oh, Tani can't really speak for himself in this, since he is primarily a, a Japanese language speaker, and he, I, I'm not—I think he speaks a little bit of English, but <laughs> but not enough to to really go in on top. He still, he still does need an interpreter to understand what people are saying, so it's difficult because we can't hear it directly from his mouth. And I've always wondered this, and we'll talk about this when we come forward too. I've always wondered about having interpreters if they if they ever leave stuff out or if they're if they ever just kind of just don't get it right. Don't get it 100% right. So uh, we'll, we'll get into this discussion when we come forward after this news, traffic, and sports update on KBLA Talk 1580. Arriva time is the right time. More of Arriva Martin in real time when we come forward. forward. I'm Tyreek Wynn. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. A new institution in Massachusetts has been named in honor of a former state representative, civil rights, and social advocate. The Benjamin Swan Institute of Social Justice was unveiled Thursday night. It is in partnership of organizations that include Swan Family Associates and the UMass Du Bois Center for African American Studies. Shalon Brown, owner of CB Diversify Consulting LLC, says the institute will work with local officials to ensure that black, brown, and other diverse communities have access to support and opportunities. A Chicago, Illinois City Council member wants to rename Columbus Drive in the downtown area after former President Barack Obama. Today in history, back in 2021, Evanston, Illinois voted to become the first American city to pay reparations for black residents for past discriminations and effects of slavery. The city gave $400,000 to each household. That's the latest. I'm Tyreek Wynn on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network, and BINnews.com. On the eastbound side of the 91, just before you get to Cherry, they're running a traffic break to get a stalled car out of one of the middle lanes. So you're at a standstill right now at Main Street. Once lanes are open, it's still pretty sluggish out towards the 605, but then not bad up head in Twain Park. Eastbound side of the 105, they did run a traffic break at Wilmington. They were able to get the dog running around on the shoulder, so that's out of the way safely. The drive on the 105, uh, pretty tough. Fr- drive on the 105, pretty tough from the 405, and that will stay busy all the way to the 605 freeway. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Their end-to-end solution helps you attract, interview, and hire candidates all year round. Schedule and conduct virtual interviews right from your Indeed dashboard. Learn more by visiting Indeed.com slash credit. Is this the title? This is the KBLA Sports Minute with Ray Richardson. Ray Richardson. The NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament is underway today. USC plays their first-round game Saturday afternoon against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. First game for the top-seeded Trojans in 13 days since they defeated Stanford to win the Pac-12 conference title. 1.30 p.m. tip-off tomorrow at the Galen Center. Live coverage on ESPN. UCLA plays their first-round game tomorrow. They're at Pauley Pavilion against California Baptist. 6.30 p.m. tip on ESPN2. Two HBCU schools are on your women's bracket. Norfolk State is at Stanford.
Stanford tonight at 7 on ESPN2. Tomorrow morning at 10, Jackson State is at UConn. That game will be live on KABC Channel 7. Tomorrow night at 7 here on KBLA, join me and my co-host Neil Scarborough for Out of Bounds. You can join the conversation at 1-800-920-1580. No debates, no speculation, just the info you need. That's your KBLA Sports Minute. I'm Ray Richardson. More news, opinions, and conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. We must understand the politics of our community, and we must know what politics is supposed to produce. produce. This election year, KBLA Talk 1580 is the place for politics, unapologetically progressive politics, and we've got two of the best and brightest to help you cut through all the noise. Weekdays at 1 p.m., it's a more perfect union with Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte. And at 4 p.m., it's Ariva Martin in real time. He's the university professor and distinguished member of the White House Correspondents Association. She's a best selling author and Harvard trained civil rights lawyer. And they are both here every day to help guide you through all the sh- this year because you know it's going to get deep. Get your politics on weekday afternoons at 1 p.m. and 4 p.m. with a more perfect union. Hosted by Dr. Nick Quarterly Corte and Ariva Martin in real time. Only on KBLA Talk 1580. We've got your black. black. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 reminding you that we keep us safe. Pro Football Hall of Famer and urban peace pioneer Jim Brown believed in just that. So he founded the Amera I Can Foundation for Social Change in 1988, focusing on at-risk and high-risk youth in underserved schools and juvenile detention facilities, as well as adult incarceration and reentry initiatives. The core of the Amera I Can program is its 15-chapter life skills curriculum. Mastery of these skills allows individuals to meet their academic potential, conform their behavior to acceptable societal standards, and improve the quality of their lives by equipping them with what they need to confidently and successfully contribute to society. Today, the foundation is led by its president, Monique Brown, who has been actively involved in the organization for more than 25 years. The Amera ICANN Foundation continues its work in memory of its founder, actor, philanthropist, and NFL legend, Jim Brown. To get involved or make a donation, please visit AmeriCanCommunity.partners. That's AmeriCanCommunity.partners. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. We're not just a thermometer recording and broadcasting popular opinion. We aim to be a thermostat. Transforming the conversation about climate justice in our community. This is KBLA Talk 1580. Talk 1580 eBay Motors is here for the ride. 120,000 miles of night drives, daily commutes, and who knows how many. Are we there yet? Through countless fixes, elbow grease, and a new radiator, you kept your ride alive. With eBay Motors, you have over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Sorry, but we actually have a wait list for our Monstera. Shaw's greenhouse is really bringing in the green. We can't keep snake plants and stuff. She needs a construction manager to build on her roots and grow. We could add a whole section for ferns. Here we'd have dahlias, dahlias, and more dahlias. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. You're listening to Ariva Martin in real time on KBLA Talk 1580. <laughs> Oh, I'm in a big mood. Cause I feel you. Something wake up cool in my body. Tell me what you do. I'm in a big mood. Cause I feel you. Something wake up cool in my body. Tell me what you do. Make a good example. But some record it to me, check, check. Get something sweet to put on my head. That's swear. Now you the cool my stress, so yeah. Make we go December, but some record it to me, check, check. 
That's right. Hour number two of the Friday group chat. I can't understand most of what they're saying, but I love that song. By, <laughs> called Mood by Wizkid. When are we going to start calling him Wiz Man? He's like 30-something. Anyway, uh, it's, it's uh, Avi Bernard back with Dr. Sean Fletcher and Danny Griffin talking about a lot of different things. And um, I do got to give a shout-out to Howard in uh, watching on YouTube. He said he didn't fill out a bracket this year because he believes there is too much parity this year in college basketball. But you can still fill out a bracket. I mean, just for fun. You don't got to be. Yeah. I mean, we're not. We not, we not none, none of us is going to probably have a good bracket. Maybe Danny. I mean, unless uh, unless UConn gets upset like they probably will. But um, <laughs> uh, Andy, I didn't even ask if you filled out a bracket. <laughs> you, did you, who you got? What's up? With, I, I've got to check in with you, Andy. What's up? What's going on with your bracket right now? You know, I'm a Pac-12 guy. Okay. So uh final year of the of the currently constructed Pac twelve. Unfortunately. It's kinda whack. But um what you call it? I have uh Arizona taking it all the way. Okay. Any any major upsets for you so far? Uh Kentucky. Okay. Kentucky was unfortunate. But uh, as far as my final four, uh I'm still good. I got Yukon, Arizona. I had Kentucky obviously in uh Kansas. Oh, so you had Kentucky going to the final four? I had uh, Kentucky going to Ooh. the final four, yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of sucks. That, that 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 one does hurt. All right, all right. Just had to check in, you know, because uh, the the madness has begun. But uh, to, Pac- challenge, 12, uh, to challenge uh to uh, challenge uh Dr. Fletcher, I'm at ninety eight point four percent on my bracket. So oh, oh, you're at the ninety eight percentile. Yeah. How is in, that po- in which bracket, men's or women? In the men's. How is that possible if you had Kentucky oh, lose? My goodness. Five and Pac ten twelve. It's- well, there's other teams, you know. You pick. Yeah, but I mean, because once you once you lose. Uh, that like uh, you're because you have the points you've scored and you have your potential points, and so once you when your your top dogs gets knocked out, then your potential points goes down too. But I guess you're in the 90th percentile of of points right now. That's that's really good. Uh, yeah, that's impressive. Yeah, and and I'm I'm assuming you picked Yale. I'm not gonna call you out on the air, but I'm guessing <laughs> you picked Yale, Andy. No, I picked San Diego State. No, I mean Yale, Yale, and um, who they just beat? Um, Auburn. Auburn. Oh, I'm tripping. Auburn. I'm looking at the wrong round. I did pick. Yeah. Auburn. Oh, so you had I mean, Auburn. There may be okay. some recalculation going on. <laughs> maybe, maybe it has. It has a. <laughs> you thought you has saw Kevin update. Clark and Reese in the wrong gender. He does, he, he probably, he, what bracket he looking at? <laughs> He's not looking at. The we need to bracket. see it now. And you maybe you may be at ninety eight combined with both. Yeah, of we better look at it. You're right though. It probably I'm, has an update I'm considering to today's loss. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. Refresh your browser, Andy. <laughs> yeah, well, his bracket. They got I glasses on his bracket <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh let's talk about shohei otani and the drama with his interpreter um so yeah so if you know you if you don't know about shohei otani he is maybe the best baseball player in the world uh he is he's been two-time american league mvp rightfully so because he is maybe the best pitcher and maybe the best hitter and, and and so in the same person in the same body, which is which is absolutely mind boggling, but he um his interpreter is uh is has been fired by the Dodgers, and uh, it's because of a uh, a lot of confusion about what's going on. So um apparently so there were some transfers made out of Otani's bank accounts, and there's confusion as to whether. Otani made those to help his friend because his interpreter is also his longtime friend. They're like best friends. And he's been his interpreter his whole time in Major League Baseball. And this is his seventh season. So he was in Anaheim for six years. And his, this guy was an interpreter the entire time. And, um, and his name is Ipe Mitsuhara. And so now he's, he's been fired and... It, there's there's all these questions and the, and the MLB is uh, is um, engaging in an investigation has opened an investigation into uh, into the whole situation. They're gonna end up questioning Shohei Otani and uh, everybody involved and a lot more information is gonna come out. So we don't know. It's hard to to really fully comment when you don't know everything. And I, I would like to have more information before um, making a decision about how I feel about it. My preliminary thoughts are that it's not nearly on the level that some of the uh, Dodger players' scandals have been on of, of, <laughs> of late. 
uh, like Julio Arias, who uh, convicted of uh, um, of uh, domestic violence or or charged rather um, multiple times, and after the first time they stood by him, after the second time they 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 cut ties. One of their best pitchers gone, as he should have been. Uh, Trevor Bauer, um, he had the whole. He's not even in Major League Baseball anymore because he was having that whole situation where. Um, he uh, reportedly was being too physical during consensual sex, and so he was accused of abuse. He uh, he was found innocent, but he's still trying to work his way back into Major League Baseball. I think he pitched in Japan last year, uh, definitely in, in another country's league. Um, so, but yeah, but my my initial reaction is that if if as long as Shohei wasn't gambling on baseball on games he was playing in, then if he was gambling then I, I don't really care that much um, unless he was doing some kind of something that would have been um, immoral. And, you know, you can't gamble on the games you're playing in because that's just it, you just can't do that because it's it's uh, it's a conflict of interest. And people wonder if you are, you know, throwing even if you're betting on yourself, it's just you just can't you just can't do it. And and so as long as he didn't do that, it's not like he uh, was accused of uh, abusing someone or or something egregious like that. And in California, it's one of the few states where um, there are there are different rules on, on on gambling, and I think it's fully legal in 40 states, um, and on sports sports betting is rather, and so um, so yeah, uh, Danny, what do you what do you think, man, about what we know so far? Yeah, it's tough, man. Um, why choose using your computers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, you know, when you have these electronic <laughs> devices, uh, you know. Especially your laptop, man, because allegedly he's on his laptop transferring stuff. Mm. So, man, you I mean, you know, but that's his boy. That's his friend, you know. So, you know, he has it open. You know, he's just transferring stuff openly, man. I mean, you know, I mean, laptops have to be treated like wallets, mm -hmm. right? Uh, especially if you have electronic uh, things on there that's connected to financial institutions. Um, let's just start from there. But this is somebody that he trusts, so everything's open. Right, right. And not only someone he trusts, someone he depends it's on. It's like a brother and a Some, friend. I mean, he's he real close. Someone he depends on. I mean, he yes. can't, he, he can't function he, without he, it. Just think about it. When we, we can do anything we want because we can go online, right? And maybe his, his laptop is set up to where all the, the, the sites are automatically in Japanese. Oh, but, yeah. But maybe yeah. they're not. And so maybe he depends on him to do some of his online shopping or yes, whatever. Yes, yes, so, yes. He's probably a concierge, too, like you're saying. He probably is a personal assistant, too. Yeah, so, he, so I, who knows? Yeah. Uh, and. I, we don't know until we know, but it just it's it seems possible that that this dude did have access to any number of his of his private stuff. Yeah, it's a federal uh, investigation going on too. Yeah, federal investigation, yeah. Um, Major League Baseball investigating. Doctor Fletcher, I know you got some thoughts. Yeah, this this potentially could be very bad. Um, it's somewhere between, in my opinion, uh, Pete Rose and just blanket naivete. It's somewhere in between that. I don't think it's, it's you know, uh, Black Sox scandal of 1905 or whatever it was. I, I don't think it's, it's that bad. But it doesn't look good. I, I'll mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. Because I have, I have heard of financial advisors, and I understand he depended on, on Mitsuhara. I understand that. But I have heard of financial advisors who had access to multiple accounts. And keep in mind, this man uh, is a multi-multi-billionaire or millionaire. Um, he's not just dealing with some flat-out Wells Fargo account, right? His, his, his booking is, is complicated. His finances are complicated. So it doesn't add up, especially when Mitsuhara uh, contradicted himself a, a couple of times to ESPN, to the, re the investigative reporter of was it was it theft or was he just doing you a solid because you have a gambling addiction, all right? Either way, uh, wiring money to an illegal bookmaker is a federal offense, which he is, he is getting his homeboy into, all right? That happened. That's a problem. And also, Otani, and I, I'm curious to, to figure out how deep this goes, Otani was exposed not because they were investigating him or his homeboy, his, his interpreter. It was uncovered because there was a federal investigating, investigation on the illegal bookmaker. 
and they found out that Otani's name is in there somehow. So there are other people, it came out, that the names haven't come out, but there are other prominent figures that are, are allegedly uh, connected to this illegal uh, sports bookmaker. So I think, this, I think this runs deeper than what we think. I think there is more to it. I think Otani knew more than what they're letting out because now all of a sudden they all got, got uh, uh, they're all moms right now. Attorneys got involved and nobody's talking anymore. Um, I think the, the secondary issue is what MLB and Commissioner Manfred is, is going to do because he's between a rock and a hard place. This is your modern day Babe Ruth that you have made out to be the golden child and now he's potentially putting the integrity of your sport in jeopardy. And it's a catch 22 because it, until more details come out that fully and completely exonerate him, any decision that you make is going to be viewed as a slap on a wrist to protect your interest as, as a league. Well, is it, is it, so is it, is it I'm is curious it, to see what happens, but is it questioning the integrity of the sport? If he wasn't betting on baseball, as, as they initially said, if he was betting on something else, football whatever the, the only the only account that i have read and i don't think we can believe it was that mitsuhara himself mm-hmm. who has admitted to lying said that he didn't and that otani knew nothing about it he said he bet on college football the nba and right. the nfl right but he's he's already been called in a lie in in two days so I don't know how. I wonder how deep this runs. Well, that's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm if, saying though. Even if he, if, if he didn't, let, let's say it was. Let's say but it even was. If he didn't. Let's say it was Otani betting, and we don't know that it was at this point. But I'm just saying, let's say that yeah. it was him betting, and he was betting on college football or whatever. Like, who cares? And I know you said it's a, it's, a, it's a federal offense to to make your bet through an illegal bookmaker. That would be the offense. But the act of gambling to me is not that serious. It's not that serious, but, you know, perception is reality to the, the public. That's why these leagues, and the, the, the gross contradiction that they're now steeped in Las Vegas when for decades they wouldn't touch it mm-hmm. because of this very reason. Mm-hmm. They wanted to shun the appearance of corruption. Mm-hmm. But these leagues work so hard, and they suspend people like uh, Calvin Ridley of the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, last year, when he was with Atlanta for a year, because he bet. But he was betting and, on, on football you know, on like games. Like, he was betting on football games. Wasn't he betting on his own games? No, he he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He he bet on other games, but it was it was through an investigation shown that he never touched any of his games at all. Okay. So that's why they only gave him a year, and then they reinstated him. But. When you, when you talk about impropriety and perceived corruption, that's at the core. That's why all of these penalties within professional and collegiate sports are so harsh because they know that that is, that is the integrity of the sport. If anybody feels like the sport is fixed, then that changes everything. Right. I think there's a lot of people who just won't believe that if Otani said, yeah, you got me, but I didn't bet on my sport – I think a lot of people are going to now, it's going to be up for debate as to whether that's legitimate and true or not. So my hope is, is that that's not the case. But I think there's, there's more uh, to this. Well, we'll, we'll <clears throat> excuse me, we'll finish the, uh, the conversation when we come forward uh, right here on KBLA Talk 1580. She's the real deal. In real time. You're listening to Ariva Martin in real time on KBLA Talk 1580. LADWP is proud to partner with KBLA to share with you how to start the new year without bill worries. We're here to help if you're behind on your bill or need help staying current. Sign up anytime online for level pay to set predictable monthly payments throughout the year, including for past due amounts. You can also check out the special extended pay arrangements of up to 48 months to help pay down your bill. If you're a senior or income qualified, you may be eligible for Easy Save to receive discounts and also qualify for free and discounted energy and water saving devices. 
You can get up to $15,000 for past due water and or sewer bills and up to $3,000 for electric bills. But you got to act fast. Funding is limited. You can reduce your past due bills and kick off the year right because here at LADWP, we're here to help. Visit LADWP.com slash cares today and find out more. With your Los Angeles Public Library card, you can access the latest music, movies, audiobooks, ebooks, graphic novels, and more, all for free. Check it out at lapl.org slash emedia. That's lapl.org slash emedia. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. Talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Single Moms Planet is a nonprofit organization dedicated to uplifting under-resourced single mom business owners and working mothers nationwide. Single Moms Planet offers comprehensive programs of financial literacy, business development, mentorship, and entrepreneurial training. They provide education, accountability, and hope. Single Moms Planet was founded by model, TV personality, and producer Nefertiri Plessy. Nefertiri felt firsthand the challenges that face single moms as she was raised by a working single mother. She learned that the most disadvantaged group in the United States are single mom families. According to the U.S. Census, 30% live under the poverty line. So she decided to do something about it, along with co-founder Cole Patterson. Their goal is to end the poverty cycle in single mother households through education, opportunity, and networking, providing family and child enrichment programs for under-resourced single parent families. Single Moms Planet serves over 10,000 single moms and their children each year. Studies show that business development and financial literacy provide a positive environment for children and families, exposing them to new possibilities and opportunities. To attend one of their fun events, make a donation, or get more information, or if you need help as a single mom, please visit singlemomsplanet.org. That's singlemomsplanet.org. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. There's no time like the present. Let's get back to more of Ariva Martin in real time on KBLA Talk 1580. And we're back to wrap up this edition of the Friday group chat with Danny Griffin and Dr. Sean Fletcher. It's me, Avi Bernard, here with you every Friday from 4 to 6 p.m. Pacific. That would be 6 to, no, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. Those, uh, those uh, con- conversions aren't always easy on the fly. Got to have the stuff written down. Uh, but let's, uh, let's wrap up the conversation on, on Shohei Otani. So um, this, um, this, this could put a damper on his, on his stint with the Dodgers. He just signed with the Dodgers. He's the highest sought-after free agent. And uh, do you think, Danny, that, uh, that this will... I mean, obviously, we got to wait to see what comes out. But, I mean, do you think this will affect his play? No. He don't, I mean, he don't, the interpreter can't interpret. He don't know what's going on. Bro. Yeah, but, I mean, just a distraction. Um, no, because they said the interpreter, I guess, apologized in front of the team. Because he's like family. And he apologized for what's going on. Um, but at the end of the day, somebody knows something. I, I just doubt if it was all the interpreter. Like, he, you know, but they're going to put it all. He's going to be the fall guy. If if if, if uh, Otani right is it uh, Otani? Mm-hmm. If, if he was involved in any shape or form, and they don't they ain't got no camera showing he pressed the button or whatever, oh, the other one he gonna take the fall. He gonna take the complete fall, and um, you know because you can't have people questioning baseball because of Pete Rose and you know steroids and all this other mess. Like this is America's game. <laughs> is it though? I mean, yeah. it's America's pastime. It's not well, the most Ameri- popular well, sport in America. No, but it's America's pastime. Like, you know, so this is the sport that derived mm. here that everybody, <laughs> the field of dreams, <laughs> the most white America's first time. That, well, I don't want to, <laughs> I disclaim that because I want to go to a Dodger game for the second time. I, I've only been to one Dodger game in my life. Oh, and I'm really? born and raised here. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. Hey, no, we, we, we got a history. We got a deep history in baseball, too. Yeah. So, Dr. Fletcher. Yeah. We do. So, we do. So we do, but it's, it's not, it's not our pastime anymore. It's, it's past. But it's not current. Well, that's well. That's what to me when I hear pastime. I mean, it's it's nobody's favorite sport right now. It's not the most popular sport for yeah. anybody right now. But soccer is the number one sport in the world. In the world, but not that, not, yeah. not in the United States. No, not even close. Yeah. So, football. do you think uh, you think this is going to affect his field on the play, Doctor Fletcher? His his his, uh, his play on the field, rather. Uh, I, I think if 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 it's true that he knows more than what 
is coming out right now, how could it not? Nobody's that strong enough to compartmentalize. We saw what happened to Tiger when when the the jig was up and his whole facade got lifted with his issues. Well, Tiger, well that's, a, that's a whole different issue. Tiger was Tiger was having sex with every white woman uh, he could find. I mean, that was that was different. But when the facade is off, it changes your focus completely. Yeah. I would be shocked if there is more, if if he's able to compartmentalize that strongly to where he knows that the walls are closing in on him and he potentially is going to face some punishment. I, I have yet to see an athlete that strong to be able to compartmentalize and perform up to being the best. I know he's not pitching this year, but still up to the best uh, hitting player in, in baseball. That's going to be tough. Man. All right. So uh, the three of us have a, pod- a podcast. It's called Top Two. Uh, it comes out with a new, we come out with a new episode every Monday, which is where each of us choose Check it out. Uh, choose our top two topics of the week. Do y'all know? Uh, you, I don't, you don't, don't say them right now, but do you know which topics you're going to choose so far, or are you still deciding, Danny? Oh no, I I, I know me. You already know yours. You already I, got yours. Yeah, I, I know one of them. You know one of them. <laughs> 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 and you still you still you still choosing the other one. Uh, all right, uh, uh, Doctor Fletcher, what about you? You know your topics yet? Oh yeah, I got both of mine written down. Oh oh, you got them written down. Oh wow! Oh, I'm ready. Yeah, I got, I got, I got notes. I come prepared to this thing. Okay, that's why y'all should check us out. We're not just talking. No, no, we're definitely not just talking. Um, we do, we do actually read. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> it, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a show that we have a good time with, if nothing else. So you can search for top two on or wherever you get your podcasts, or you can search, uh, search my name or, or either of these gentlemen's name. Uh, right, any, uh, anything else before we get out of here, Danny? Uh, my upset tomorrow. I got an upset tomorrow. Duquesne over Illinois. Oh. Oregon over Creighton. Du- oh, oh, wow. That's two really big upsets. Oh, it's huge upsets. What, are, you, are you on board with either of those, Dr. Fletcher? Yikes. No, I'm not going with either of those, nor do I think Danny's going to go with He wouldn't put money on it. So, no. I'm no, not, I'm not. not. <laughs> not <laughs> I can't put no money on that deal. Yeah. I'm changing my focus. Yeah, I can't no. put money on nothing unless it's a business. Not at all. Uh, I'm just going gonna, gonna to enjoy this weekend. I hope y'all do too. All right, brothers. Always a good time talking to you. I'll talk to you this weekend when we record Monday's episode of Top 2, the podcast. Always appreciate you, brothers. Have a, have a good one. And thank you for joining us too. Up next, it is the Raw Report with Robin Ayers. You have yourself a fabulous weekend. I'm Avi Bernard, and I am gone. KBLA 1580 Santa Monica. I'm Tyreek Wynn. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. A new institution in Massachusetts has been named in honor of a former state representative, civil rights, and social advocate. The Benjamin Swan Institute of Social Justice was unveiled Thursday night. It is in partnership of organizations that include Swan Family Associates and the UMass Du Bois Center for African American Studies. Shalon Brown, owner of CB Diversified Consulting, LLC, says